What's up guys? Thank you for joining. Today I'm going to talk to you about the power of a couple of DAX functions in Power BI. I'm going to talk to you about the all, all selected, all accept, rank X, and also is in scope DAX functions in Power BI. So guys, this is going to be fun. Let's do this. Before we get started real quick, this is the final result. We have here a slicer and also a matrix. The main goal here is to find percentages, okay? Three different percentages. We have percentages on all, which is everything should add 100%. And we also have percentages on all selected. This is quite, quite powerful as well. You might say this percentage and this percentage are the same, but they are actually not the same. What happens if you select, for example, two or three different countries, as you can see, on all selected, everything adds 100% here, just for the three selected product. And then the other piece, the first measure here is not giving you 100%. So that's the main difference. And then for percentages on product, so everything is giving you 100% at a product level. So that is what I'm going to show you today. So now let's go to the next step. So the main goal here is to find the rank on profits. And this is for countries, right? Number one is going to be France. It has the highest number of profits. And then the last one is going to be Mexico, which is going to be number five with about 2.9 million in profits. And then if you select a couple of different countries, let's say France, Germany, and Mexico, it's also giving you here the rank for these selected countries only. So this is really powerful, my friends. And now no more talking and let's do this. So the first thing you want to do here is create a measure. Let's select the visual here and then right click new measure. So let's call this measure percentage on all. So let's do this. So let's create variables here. So it's so much easier to read the code. So let's call our first variable current profits. Okay. And then we're going to call here one of the measures that we already created which is profits. The next variable is going to be all profits. Okay. And here we're going to use this powerful function called calculate. Let's call here as well the profits measure. And then let's add here the all function. This is the power of the all function. So here we want to modify the filter context. If you're not familiar with filter context, I'm going to share with you a link here as well. Check it out. It's really, really worth it. And here, what we're going to do is remove the filter context for product and segment. Okay. What does all do here? So what it does is basically remove all the filters for product and segment. So it's going to give you here the total amount of profits, regardless of these two filters. So that's the main idea here. So let's close parentheses for calculate and let's keep moving. So the next variable is going to be here result. And we're going to use here the divide function. We need to divide current profits, the variable that we just created. And then the denominator is going to be all profits, the other variable. So once you're done with this, Let's hit return. By the way, if you're not familiar with variables, I also have a tutorial. I'm going to share with you the link. Check it out as well. So result, boom. So once we are done, let's approve these changes and let's see what happens. So this is magic, my friends. So let's go over here again, select the, the measure. And then this is going to be percentage. And we only need one decimal. So check this out. Let's drag this and drop it here. Boom. And as you can see, everything here is adding 100%. We have here Amarela, which is the product. It is about 17%. If you add these components, the segment components is going to give you 17% as well. And this applies to the other products and segments as well. So this is powerful. Let's keep going, guys. Let's use the all selected function. But before we use the all selected function, let me filter this real quick and see what I'm talking about here. So if we select three products, for example, so what is going on here? 
it's not giving you the total 100%. It's only giving you 40%, which is Amorela, Carretera, and Montana. It's giving you just 40%, 40% of the total, of the total products, right? And here's a trick. If we want to get 100%, we have to modify the previous measure. So let's do that. Let's go over here again. Since we don't want to write everything from scratch, let's copy this measure. Control C, right click new measure, Control V, and then let's use selected here. This is a different measure. It's going to be percentage on all selected. And guess what? Instead of all, we're going to use here all selected. So this is something really, really powerful, my friends. Let's approve this change. And now let's drag this new measure and put it here. Check this out. So let's make a couple of changes here. Percentage, just one decimal for now. Boom. So now, as you can see, we selected three different products and it's giving you 100% for these three products only. So if we want to select another product, for example, it's going to give you 100% based on the selected products only. And then as you can see, the other measure is giving you the percentages based on the total. So let's remove this filter for now and let's keep moving. So this is also powerful. Let's say that I want to have 100% for products, 100% products, regardless of the selection, regardless of the filter that we apply. For that particular case, we have to use the all except function. So let's do that. So let's do something really powerful here as well. So let's copy this code and then right click new measure. So what we need to do here is we need to rename this measure again. This is going to be on product. And guess what? We're going to use the all except function here. This is going to be all except. And then the syntax is a little bit different. We have to reference here the table first. And the table is going to be the financials table. And then here, because we want to have percentages based on product, 100% product, we have to select here product, okay? Product right there. And then let's remove these two. So in that way, this works perfectly fine. So how, how does it work? So it says right here, okay, remove all the filters except the filters for product. When I say filters, I'm talking about the filter context, okay? So let's approve these changes and let's see what happens. Fingers crossed, my friends. And let's add here percentage for this measure and just one decimal. So now you can see for products, it adds 100%. Every single product adds 100%. Now, if you select a couple of different products here, it's still giving you 100% for product. Now, I should have done this at the beginning, but if you're not familiar with these functions, it's highly recommended. Go to Microsoft Learning and check it out. Really, really powerful concepts there. And also there are a few examples. So now let's keep moving and talk about the RankX and InScope functions. So the main goal here is to find the rank on profits. So let's create another measure here, right click, and let's call this measure rank on profits. And as you might have guessed, we're going to use here the rank X function. So we need here a table. In order to find a table here, we can just reference a table or we can reference a column, but we have to add here this powerful function called all. So let's do that. And here, let's select our country column. Perfect. So what is going to be the expression here? The expression is going to be the measure that we created or the measure that was already in the model, which is profits. Let's close parentheses and let's see what happens. Let's drag this measure into the visual and boom. So now you can see the rank on profits for this particular visual. But there are a couple of things worth mentioning here. For total, we are also seeing number one here. It shouldn't be the case and we need to fix that. What else? So let's select a couple of countries here and let's see what happens. So now you can see the pattern. 
it's giving you here the rank of profits, but it's not giving you here based on the selected countries. There is something here that we need to improve. We don't see number four here, for example, we are seeing just number five. So there is an opportunity here to improve the code. Let's go back to the measure here. And as you might remember, if we want to have the rank on profits just for the selected countries, it's very similar to what we did a few minutes ago, we have to change all for all selected. And let's see what happens. If we do that, check this out. Now you can see, this is going to be the rank just for these four countries. So let's try this one right here. This is going to be the rank just for these three selected countries. So this is working perfectly fine. So now, how do we fix this right here? Number one, it shouldn't be the case because this is not a country. That's when the is in scope function comes into play. So let's do that. Let's add here the if function. If this is in scope, here it is. If this row, I'm talking about here the country row, is in scope, so please give me this measure. If this is not the case, just give me nothing. That's what I'm saying here, basically. So let's approve these changes and let's see what happens. Fingers crossed, boom, it disappeared. See right there? So now this number one is gone. So let's remove this filter for now and let's see how it works. This is working perfectly fine, my friends. We don't see number one here for total. And now we are seeing here the rank on profits for all countries. If we select just three countries, we are seeing the rank on profits just for these three selected countries only. There you have it, my friends. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If so, as always, please give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, don't forget to subscribe and also if you have questions or comments leave them in the section below thank you guys for your time and see you in my next tutorial